Hey welcome to this tutorial. I'll show you what you can do with the texture replacer. I change the floor, the bottles, the noodles, the dagger knight slayer, flour, sandwich, credit card, and even the coins in the cash register. Alright. First things first. You're gonna need the Asset Studio. You can grab it online or hit up the link in the description. The Asset Studio lets you dive deep into the game files to see how it's all put together. This helps us get a better grasp of the developer's game building process. With the software, we can extract the meshes and textures we wanted to change. After downloading Asset Studio, create a new folder or right click on the zip file to extract its contents. Once you're done, navigate to the folder inside and look for the Asset Studio GUI. Double click on the Asset Studio GUI. Then, on the top left corner, click on File, followed by Load File. Now, we want to browse all the way back to our supermarket simulator game path. Try to locate your Steam library. The location of the Steam library can vary depending on a custom installation directory during the setup of Steam. For me, it's in V, then Steam Library. After that, head to Steam Apps, then Common, and find Supermarket Simulator. Finally, navigate to Supermarket Simulator Data. Here we do a double click on the file Shared Asset Zero Assets. Make sure it's the one with the number 0, not the asset with the number 1 below. This process can take a couple of minutes, depending on how fast your system is. You can watch the green loading bar in the bottom left corner. Sit back and relax for now. I'll need your full attention after that. Let me fast forward here to save us some time. Okay, now we have the scene hierarchy, asset list, and asset classes. For now, let's just focus on the asset list. We can filter the list with different file types, which will help us find the textures we're looking for more quickly. Go to Filter Type and select Texture 2D. Click on Name to sort the files by name. We will modify two objects here, the sugar susu and the floor. First, let's pick up the sugar. It's obviously under the name Sugar Powdered. This one here is not the right texture we need. It's only the icon for the game object. You can find it on the ordered boxes, shelves, or on the computer while ordering it. When adding textures to 3D objects, we use a method called UV mapping. It's like flattening out the object and painting it on a flat surface before wrapping it back up. It just looks like this. Keep an eye out for textures like that if you want to modify them in the future. Now. Simply right-click on this one and choose Export Selected Assets. I recommend creating a new folder on the desktop or somewhere else. I've already created a new folder on my desktop called Supermarket Modding. Inside this folder, we can create another new folder named Textures. With that, we can keep everything organized and clean. Go to the Texture folder and choose Select Folder. After that, the folder with the texture inside should pop up in front of you. On to the second texture, the floor. There's a good reason to pick the floor to demonstrate what you have to do for the reflection in-game. If your normal maps are not the same as the texture, you will see wrong reflections on it. Don't worry, normal maps are easy to create, and I'll show you how you can do that. In many cases, normal maps are often displayed in a blue color palette, but that's not always the case. It's advisable to check the file names or the description of the texture to determine what type of texture it represents. Usually the name of the file, as in our example here, floor parquet A, is the main texture. If we replace the A with an N, it becomes a normal map, but it's not that simple. Normal maps work with specific colors to indicate depths 
and heights. But for now, let's just export both of the textures into our texture folder. Hold the control key and click on floor A and floor and to highlight them together. Now right click on one of the selected textures and choose export selected assets. Make sure texture is chosen. We are inside the texture folder, so we have to go back once. Now, choose folder. And right after this, it should pop out again. We can quickly check inside the folder to make sure everything is here. Everything's on track. Now, let's dive into editing our first texture, which happens to be the sugar package. I'll use Photoshop to edit the files, but you can choose whatever software you feel comfortable with. Open the file in Photoshop. You can either drag and drop the texture inside or open it via the menu at the top. To get an understanding of how the textures are built, I'll show you how they are wrapped around the object. As you can see, we have a box here with the texture wrapped around it. To clarify, I'll navigate to the UV mapping section in Blender. Here we can finally see how the model is sliced to fit our texture. Just imagine a dice sliced up and laid on the table. The same principle applies for all 3D models. When we select the front face of the box, we can see our selection appear on the left half of the screen. This helps us identify which area of the texture corresponds to the object's changes. Remember, you don't need to do this as I'm doing here. Often, just a look at the texture is enough to understand where a face of an object is located. Now, let's modify the texture. You can watch me edit it, or skip to the next timestamp. If you are satisfied with your results, simply save the texture as a PNG file. For now, I'll save this one as a copy of the original. Alright, here we go. Now we need to navigate to our supermarket simulator game directory. Then, double click on Beep Inex, followed by Plugins, and then Texture Replacer. Now, move this window aside to make space for the other window. All the custom textures we create must be placed in the object's textures folder. You can rename them after placing them into the folder. Ensure that the name of the PNG file matches the original name. After that, we can do a quick test run in the game. Now, I'll show you a method using in-game screenshots to create icons. Place one of the products on the shelf and try to get a good view of it. I prefer to capture them at a slight angle, ensuring that the cursor is not in the way. For a quick screenshot, press the Windows, Shift, and the S key together. Now, select a rough area around the object. You can close the game from here and open Photoshop or any image editing software you prefer. Let's import the picture into Photoshop. You can press Ctrl and V to paste it. Now let's extract the icon we'll need. Look for the Suga powdered susu and export it. Take the icon and drag it into Photoshop. Let's take the screenshot we made it earlier and paste it into the icon. Scale it to match the icon size. It doesn't have to be perfect. After that, try to remove most of the background. Make sure only the layer with the new texture is visible. Hide the original icon. With that, we can save this as a PNG file. We have to find the icon ID. We can use the list that Shacklin already made inside the Texture Replacer folder under Templates. Open the 
or we can use the Wikipedia site. Click on the product you edited, and right under the icon, there is the product ID we need. In our case, it's 147. Get your Supermarket Simulator folder, open BPNX, Plugins, Texture Replacer, and then go to Products Icons. Take the icon you made and drag, and drop it into the Products Icons folder. Rename the file to the ID icon, so in this case, it should be 147 icon. Navigate one folder back and go into the Products Names folder. Here, we can change the brand and the name of the products. It's under the same ID. In my case, for ID 147, open it and name it whatever you like. This is the final topic for the textures. Let me quickly show you how I created my normal maps. After that, we can go with the 3D models. For example, let's quickly pick up a texture. Try to get a seamless one. Seamless textures can be repeated as many times as needed without any noticeable joins or breaks. They are perfect for walls or floors. This is the website I'm using to generate normal maps. It's online, quick, and easy to use. Just drag the texture onto the left box and watch the magic happen. You can uncheck the rotation option for now. Use the left mouse button to rotate the cube and the right mouse button to drag it in different directions. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Just mess around with the options until you're happy with the results. Name it, and then click Download. Now, grab your texture and normal map files and place them within the Texture Replacer folder under Objects Textures. Since I've already replaced them, I can simply copy the names from my existing textures. If you have a JPG file, you can simply change the file type by renaming it to PNG. I'll list all the file names in the description, so you can easily copy them from there. Make sure to name them correctly. Well done. Now let's check our changes in the game. The changes I made on the normal map weren't enough. But now, you know how to adjust it. Experiment with the options and try to achieve a good result. But be careful not to overdo it. Okay. Now it's time for the 3D model modification. That's probably why you're here. I have prepared a model here for demonstration purposes. You can use any model you like or create your own. This tutorial will only show how to replace models in the game, not how to use Blender. First of all, we need to understand the scale of the meshes in the game. We can import any model from the game itself for that purpose. There's one included with the mod. Navigate to Texture Replacer, then Templates, and open Sample. From there, go to Objects Meshes. Here, we have a model that we can use in Blender. Simply drag and drop it inside. The first thing we notice is that the objects from the game are very small. That's because Blender works with larger units than Unity itself, so most of the 3D objects appear too big. Simply scale them down to the appropriate size, and you're good to go for now.
You can try using the cylinder as the center or reference point. For the game itself, the negative Y axis points from Blender are considered the front. So, if you place the objects onto the shelf, they always face the negative Y axis direction in Blender. Ensure that your object faces this way. Otherwise, it will be incorrectly positioned in-game. Don't forget to delete the cylinder we used as reference. Always make sure your model is not split into multiple parts. If it is, join them all together. If you don't do that, the game will only show one of the splits. We can export this model as an OBJ file directly into the game path. Navigate to the Steam library, then to Steam Apps, Common, Supermarket Simulator, BIP Inex, Plugins, Texture Replacer, and finally into Object Meshes. We now need to get the name of the product we want to replace. In this case, let's use Serials. It's important to match the name exactly as it appears in the game's assets. We can ensure everything is correct by checking it in the Asset Studio. The product I want to replace is Choky Pig. Under Scene Hierarchy, we can see how the game is built up. Make sure to use the var01 suffix in the name. Now, let's quickly place the texture inside the object's textures folder, rename it, and then we can run the game. The name should match exactly the same as the 3D object we named before. Quickly check it in-game to see how it looks. From my experience, there is always at least one issue with new objects. As we can see, it's way too big. The text on the aid kit is backwards too. These two problems are easy to fix. Let's scale the object smaller inside Blender. I would say just a bit more than half of the original size. And after that, we have to fix the issue with the mirrored text on the aid kit. I have a theory about self-created or imported 3D models. It seems that the game itself mirrors the models on the x-axis, but this only applies to models that are not from the game itself because they are already mirrored. So, just do a quick mirroring on the x-axis in Blender before exporting your models. Press the S key for scaling, then the X key for the coordinate we want to change, and after that press minus one and it should be mirrored. You can export the model directly to the mod folder and start the game right after. It's the quickest way to see your progress on the model without moving files around. As you can see, the text is now displayed correctly. We just have to scale it down a bit more. While we are scaling it down, we notice it's placed a bit off. Try to keep the object in the middle of the Y and X axis. Those are the red and green lines. We are still missing the icon image and the object name. Let me show you how you can create icons without having to go in game. Create an image with the size of 500 by 500 pixels. We'll use Blender to set up the object in a scene with lights and a camera. If you're not familiar with how to do that, you can use the first method with in-game screenshots or watch a tutorial for it. Remember to flip the object on the x-axis before taking the screenshot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And a big shootout to Shacklin for creating this awesome mod. Happy modding!
the frag out.